Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where we are taking a look at just an interesting and unusual pre-Civil War cartridge firing pistol. But it's not a metallic cartridge, this actually used a paper and leather cartridge. Uh, this is a, a pistol that was designed and manufactured by one William Walker Marston. Now, Marston would uh, continue to have a significant career for several decades in firearms manufacturing. Uh, he was born in 1822, he passed away in 1872, uh, and both he and his father actually were gunsmiths uh, working in New York City. Now, he's probably, probably the, the gun that he manufactured that is best known would be the Gibbs carbine. We actually have a video on that particular gun. Uh, it was not designed by him, but he was the company that, or he owned the manufacturing facility that was approached to actually manufacture those Gibbs carbines, which worked really well until the New York City uh, conscription riots burned down uh, his factory, the Phoenix Armory, and all well, that ended the Gibbs carbine. But anyway, this is a pistol he designed in the early 1850s. So it is a single shot breech loading pistol. Let me go ahead and show you it up close and describe what that cartridge was. We only really have one substantial marking here, and that's on the top of the barrel. It is W.W. W. Marston, William Walker Marston, patent 1852, New York. And then there's also a serial number on the bottom, both on the frame and the barrel. So 535 out of about a thousand total. This is right nicely in the middle. Now the gun itself is just a single shot pistol. It's a percussion pistol, so we have a percussion hammer here. Uh, we'll touch on this in a minute. That's a tang sight that's been added. Um, Single action pistol, of course, fires. Now what makes it interesting is this sliding breech opening. If you look inside there, you can see that there's a, a small hole in the center of the breech face. There's going to be a tunnel that connects that hole there to that hole right up in there, which is where the flame from the percussion cap comes through. So when the breech is closed, firing it here will result in the cartridge uh, detonating. Now, the cartridge that was used here was patented as well by Marston, and it was a cardboard or paper uh, tube, cartridge body, with actually a leather, like a fairly heavy leather base to it. And the idea was that I believe that the tube was supposed to blow down range with the bullet when you fired, and then that leather base plate, base pad, was supposed to stay there in the breech. And when you loaded the next round, it would push that leather pad in front of it, which would clean the bore as it traveled down the barrel in front of the bullet, the next bullet. Now whether that actually worked is kind of questionable. Um, that's a concept that a number of people came up with at various times, and I haven't seen anything really conclusive on it. While they may, that sort of thing may have helped, it certainly didn't remove the need for cleaning, and that's normally what guys were claiming with this sort of thing. Like, oh, you don't have to clean it because it's a self-cleaning cartridge. And that, that never really worked out. So the advantage here, of course, while this is still black powder, you still have to carry around percussion caps. Uh, the cartridge means that your bullet and your powder are contained together. So the powder is pre-measured, you don't have to worry about it you know, trying to use a funnel of some sort or something else to make sure it all goes down the barrel. You don't need a ramrod, you don't have to push the bullet in from the front. You can simply open the breech, thumb in a cartridge, close the breech, cock the hammer, and fire. The proper sights on this pistol are a little rear notch here, and a front blade there. And that's not, not a great sight system, but that's exactly what I would expect in the 1850s for a commercial sort of pistol. What's a bit unusual is that this tang sight has been added. It's threaded into the rear of the receiver there, so you can adjust its elevation just by screwing it in or out. And it has an absolutely tiny little hole in it. So, I mean, this is, I don't think I'll even be able to get a camera shot through to show you the sight picture. Yeah, my camera can't even focus on that because it's so small. What's interesting to me is that's that sight becomes usable only if the gun is about 10 inches away from your eye, which makes me wonder if someone hadn't perhaps made some sort of clip-on drop-in sort of like probably wireframe shoulder stock to use with these, because 
unless you're using a really weird shooting position and kind of crimping this thing, you know, bending your elbow severely and holding this really close to your face, I don't see any way for this sight to actually have been useful. But if you put a little compact wire stock on it, then this makes a lot of sense. So I don't, I haven't found any pictures of these with stocks. There doesn't appear to be any modification to the butt of this gun to use a stock, but who knows? That, that's an interesting question that this leaves out there. For what it's worth, Marston would produce a wide variety of other pistols uh, throughout his career, uh, including a bunch of kind of weird sorts of designs. Uh, he had some double barrel swivel pistols, he made a three barrel Derringer that's kind of notable. Uh, he did get a contract for uh, signal pistols during the US Civil War. Uh, he made a lot of pepper boxes, he made some standard sort of typical pattern percussion revolvers. Uh, quite really, qu really quite a range of, of different things beyond this interesting breech-loading pistol. Uh, and by the way, I should also point out, he did make a version of this that was straight muzzle-loading percussion. So before it was a breech-loader, it was just a single-shot um, muzzle-loading pistol. In total, just about a thousand of these were manufactured, uh, some iron frame, some brass frame apparently, and they were made in three different calibers. You could get them in 31, 36, or 44 caliber, with a variety of barrel lengths, lengths from about 4 inches to about 8 inches, so 100 to 200 millimeters. And uh, you know, they're just a neat, interesting pistol. All the early breech loaders are, I think, very interesting. So uh, if you'd like to see a little bit more about this, if you'd like to see, uh, well, the Rock Island Company's uh, detailed pictures, their description, their value estimate, you can get to all of that uh, on their catalog page. You can get there by way of the link in the description text below to Forgotten Weapons. Thanks for watching.